G'day, Bomber fans. Talk about a deflating weekend. Last review I did, we were over the moon. It was a statement win. We beat our rivals. We claimed that scalp. Uh, this week, we had a chance to cement a spot in the top four, second on the ladder if we won. We were up against the Demons without two of their best players. The new and improved Bombers were supposed to come out and show the footy world we mean business, but we were shown up. We let a golden opportunity slip. We could have locked ourselves in the top four. Now we are closer to exiting the eight. So let's talk about this dis disappointing uh, game of footy. Remember to leave your votes down in the comments, of course, with the player of the match. The first quarter started with a bang. We looked hot early. We kicked three of the first four. We controlled the game, controlled the ground. We only led by a point at quarter time break, but it really should have been more. We looked to be controlling the ground just so well, but we just didn't make the most of our opportunities. The second term is when the rain started to pour, which suited the tougher, more experienced, harder team. We got scared of the contact and the Ds exposed us a bit. They kicked uh, three goals to one, but you felt there was a big shift in momentum. It could have been more. They started to get control. We trailed by 13 points. The third term was just as frustrating if not more uh, than the second because the weather dried up it, it suited us we had a lot more of the pill but we just couldn't get anything done it was a, a boring game, a quarter in the end it was two goals to one the demons way uh, which gave them a three gold lead going into the last quarter that last term was a roller coaster you thought there would only be a few goals in it and, and that's why when the d's got out to a 41 point lead you thought it was it uh, to our credit we came back late they had the d's a little bit nervous but really it was too little too late we only lost by 17 points it should have been much more the demons were the much better team on the night deserving of of their win so let's talk about this really disappointing game of footy so how did the demons win uh, well for starters they just played to the conditions a lot better than we did that was it in the end we went in very tall and that suited the d's in the wet they had more run than us and were just better on ground level i thought the wings were a no contest nick cox was destroyed out there langdon ran amok he was best on ground i reckon uh, windsor on the other had a huge impact as well i thought the game plan and the lack of ad adaptability for us was really disappointing we tried to control the game and the uncontested footy like we would in the dry which worked when it wasn't absolutely bucketing down but it was bucketing down for about 80% of the game. It was really, uh, when it was noticeably wet, we looked lost and we just couldn't adapt. The Ds were just smarter in the conditions. They weren't too tricky. They just did the simple things well, which is what you got to do in the wet. They gained territory. They didn't try and overdo anything in the process. They brought the ball to ground well. I thought their intensity was fantastic. They were happy to absorb our attacks and just kill us with that skidding footy at the back. They were just the smarter team and I think they were really, they really outworked us well, which I'll talk about later. We are clearly not a very good wet weather team. It's been in that case for a while now. We have some young players that are just not suited for wet weather footy. We have a game style which is not suited for wet weather footy and that's a problem when you're playing a winter sport. You can't rely on games under the roof to get us far in a year. We want uh, we want to be playing more footy at the MCG in the future. I hope we, we start to actually show some grit when we do because right now we are a great side when it's a clear night but as soon as it gets a little bit cold or a little bit damp we drop. The midfield, what a mess. I, I don't know how we can go into a game uh, against a team without a recognised Ruckman and get beaten like we did. We talk about how good our midfield is a lot, but that was just not it. We had the upper hand. Melbourne had to be reactive to us winning the hitouts with no Gorn, but we still lost the clearance count 44 to 32. We weren't just beaten in the guts. We were absolutely belted. Uh, spoiler alert, but you're not going to see any midfielders getting any votes because I think just about every single engine room op operator was down on Saturday. Merritt was tagged out by Neil Bullen and couldn't impact like he usually would, although I, I do think he was probably our best in the guts. He just didn't have any help. Shiel won heaps of the pill, but was not good with it. Caldwell had three clearances for the night. I don't really know why we didn't throw Durham in there more. You would think a night like this would be perfect for him, but he was in less than half of our centre bounces. The sad thing is he still topped us for clearances. I don't know. I just feel like we're so good at our best in the guts, but when it's bad, it is very bad. We scored two goals from stoppages in a game when the opposition was missing their best midfielder and only Ruckman. On a wet night, the Demons forced us to do our scoring from the back half, which is just never going to work. It's hard enough to move the footy against the Ds in the dry, but in the wet, scoring more from defensive half than the attacking half, that has to be looked at. And it starts with the midfield. The Ds were hard at it. They were better at keeping that soaked ball bubbling around if it wasn't in their position. Uh, they were just really good. I think they scared us a bit, to be honest. They showed us what a real midfield looks like. Trent Rivers, Cosy Pickett, even Neil Bullen himself had a lot of the footy. A disappointing night from the midfield. I think we were just outcoached as well. I, I thought the, the change to bring Van Royen into the ruck instead of Petty uh, completely changed the game after quarter time. He started bodying Draper and allowing him to get less of the footy around the ground in the air. I thought they obviously played to the conditions better. Their game style, I spoke of that. Uh, they absorbed our pressure and were happy to send the ball over our heads the other way. I think they had a clear identity and, and when it was wet, we didn't. We kept trying to play the way that we do in the dry, which I spoke of. I thought our defensive setup was mostly good, but there were moments when individuals were playing dry with a footy, not ready for the skiddy bounce out the back against a smaller opponent. And speaking of smalls, ours had zero impact. Zero goals from Essendon small forwards on a night like this. And it's not even really their fault for the most part. They were pushed so far up the ground, making our key forwards the deepest target 
targets with no real presence around them a lot of the time on ground level. You saw the other end, Melksham, Frit, uh, Pickett, Chandler. These guys were dangerous. Guelphy and Gresham were nowhere to be seen in Ford 50. You cannot rely on key forwards to kick goals in games this wet. You need a presence on ground level inside 50, and we had absolutely none. Late in the game, when Nick Martin went up there to good effect, but I honestly think that was just because Melbourne had run out of legs from working us off the park for the first 100 minutes of the game. A lot has been made about our Essendon edge this year, but I think we looked really weak on Saturday. That was a weak performance from an unproven side up against a mature and powerful performance uh, from a powerful team. Uh, the stats don't really show it, but the eyes don't lie. We were just the weaker team despite being so much bigger and stronger in the air. That tackle count is deceiving. We won it, yes, but I thought they were way hotter in the contest than us. They had a few of our younger players scared, as I said, and I talked about us being outworked just before. The Demons run 8 kilometers more than us, and that is coming off a longer break. They played on Sunday last week, we played on Friday. We had uh, two extra days to recover and recoup, and somehow we were still worked off the park completely by by an older, better team in the end. And they were the better team. No one can blame umpires or a short break or anything. There are no excuses for this loss. In the end, 17 points looks a lot better than it should have been. That late surge was a nice silver lining, but I honestly think it just papers over the cracks because we did not deserve to lose by three goals. They were 41 points up with 10 or so minutes to go. They had worked us, us so hard up until that point. I think they just got tired and complacent. They knew the game was won. We were bad when it mattered and good when it didn't. Uh, sorry. Yes, bad when it mattered and good when it didn't. That's right. Uh, for a good 80% of the game, Melbourne were the better side. They are just the better side. This is a team that can go in and be trusted to do damage in September. And, and I just, I don't know. We just aren't at that level yet if we keep dropping important games like this. Last weekend was great. Collingwood win was awesome. But it doesn't mean a lot after a performance like this. I think it's time we looked at some individuals. I know it's fresh off the back of one loss, so it's not exactly the time to really swing the axe hard. But... I would be shocked if both Nick Cox and Archie Perkins played next week. They're looking tired. Cox was looking like he was playing at 50%. He was not hard at it. Perkins has been at that level for a few weeks now. They are young, so this is common. They need a spell in the twos to gather some confidence and fitness. Uh, but I don't know. I, they're just not it right now. Peter Wright was subbed out of the game, but... To be fair to him, he's kicked more goals in the last three or four weeks than, than anyone else on the team, really. Uh, and that night was just not good for him. It, Peter Wright and wet weather does not work. He's a better player under the roof. It, it makes you wonder what it's going to be like on the MCG if we have to play finals there. Uh, Gresham hasn't been as good as he was before the bye. Stringer is just not having that impact he was having earlier on either. I feel like we have some underperforming players, which is obviously not ideal, but I think it should be a little silver lining out of this game. We can clearly get better. We can clearly improve if individuals start to lift. Merritt was held. Stringer wasn't doing much. Not many had multiple goals. We had some passengers. It's not like we played well and were soundly beaten. We clearly were not at the level we should have been at. We were really poor, and that's been the case for a few players for a few weeks now. There are things we can be doing to improve the best 22 and I hope that starts with some of those underperforming youngsters being dropped from the team just for them to build confidence in the VFL and possibly give some uh, better performers in the VFL another chance. Look, is this the end of the world? Not really. We're still in the eight. We're doing better than what we thought we'd be doing at the start of the year but this is just proof that we aren't a proper great side right now. We play some really great footy at our best but we are not that ruthless. We're not that top four team that many hoped we could become. The win last week was strong uh, but it means nothing if you follow it up the following week with a loss like this. If that win against Collingwood told us we could match it against good teams on the big stage, this loss told us that we are just as easily, uh, we just as easily can crumble in similar matchups. This team is just not ready to be feared by the comp. Even an underperforming Melbourne missing their best players can play us off the park. I know it was only a 17 point loss, but they did play us off the park. They were great. We were poor. We will probably win our next few games, hopefully, uh, but I'm not going to be convinced until we start winning games uh, like this more consistently. Still a long way to go in the season. We're set to play finals with the platform we've built for ourselves, but the boys need to do more to convince us fans that we can actually hold up in September if we get there, because right now, I just don't know. I don't know if we get the Essendon from last week or the Essendon from the match we've just played. We'll see how we close out the year. Let's get on to some votes for now, though. Tough night for votes. Always tough after a loss. I won't be giving any love to midfielders after that performance. Uh, one to Jordan Ridley, who was uh, composed. Down back in the wet. Topped the team for disposals. Quite a few intercepts. Had some down moments, but so did every single other player on the team. I've given Nick Martin two. His last quarter was fantastic. Nine disposals, three goals, four goals to the game. Just another really strong game for him as he builds his case for an All-Australian spot. Uh, the reason he 
didn't get three is because his best work was done when it really did not matter too much. That's why I've given three votes to Ben Mackay. 17 interceptions, seven intercept marks. Seven intercept marks in the wet, mind you. His hands were incredible. He saved us on quite a few occasions. That third quarter in particular, without him, we wouldn't have, we would have been screwed. He had 14 intercept possessions in the second half. That is outrageous. Eight in that third quarter. He was a monster when the Ds really started to get going. So he gets my three votes. Uh, role player, I don't even know, to be honest. I've given it to Kyle Langford. I just thought he was the best of our forwards. Two goals, 15 touches, and assist. Quite a few score involvements as well. I thought he was hard at it too. Did I miss anyone out? Uh, I, I don't know. Not really, to be honest. There were some high ball winners, but I don't really think they had much of an impact, as much of an impact as our defenders did. Uh, so leave your votes down below with your role player as well. That's all. Really disappointing weekend. We have some must-win games coming up against bottom six sides in the next couple of weeks. We win those. We should be on the cusp of a September entry. We lose one. It could be trouble. Got to be an interesting fortnight. Uh, we'll put a, pre a preview out on Wednesday and a VFL video out soon as well. Uh, like if you enjoyed. Uh, subscribe if you're new and go Bombers.